Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It is finally time. The time has arrived to start the Dragon series. Now, credit where credit is due, first and foremost, I have gotten this lovely idea from Delightful. I'm sure you guys have absolutely seen her wonderful Dragon series. Just I'll just post a few photos here because she's awesome and she's amazing and she created wonderful works of art and I was just I just saw it and was just like, oh, oh, I want to do that. <laughs> so uh, with her permission, I'm going to be starting my own um, Elemental Dragon series. And I've been wanting to make a dragon for a while. You guys have also been asking a dragon for a while, which like, I get it dragons are awesome and I've missed making them I really have like I I'll post a few pictures of dragons I've put I've made over the um a few years here and there and I just haven't really done it much lately so I want to change that but <clears throat> I may have bitten off more that I could shoot this video you'll see you'll see your girl might have bitten off a little bit little bit <clears throat> just <laughs> Which is why this intro is already a mess because I am a mess. <laughs> this video took so much out of me. <laughs> but yes, we are going to be starting the dragon series. We are going to be starting with one I wasn't suspecting whatsoever. You know, I kind of had an idea. I had an idea for earth, I had an idea for fire, air. The only one I didn't have an idea for was water. And I put a poll up in my YouTube community post and was just like, let let you guys decide. And you all were just like, I bet she doesn't have anything planned for water. Let's do water. And you all picked water. And I looked at that and was just like, what? Water? That's not the one I planned for. And of course, it ended up being one of the most detailed monstrosities I've ever created. This... I, I, it's just, it's been a trip. <laughs> it's been a trip. I'm going to have to edit this intro so much. I'm doing this all in one take. <laughs> I don't even have time for multiple takes. This is what you guys are getting. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Crazy care has come out, <laughs> but not, I'm not asking for managers. Okay. I'm just sitting in the corner crying in a fetal position because I bit off more than I can chew. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Now, just a heads up, this is definitely one of those videos where it's more of a, here's my process of how I made something, rather than here I'm teaching you how to make something. Now, that's not to say you can't always get tips and tricks from watching this video. You absolutely can, and you can learn a lot from it. But, I mean, I 3D printed and 3D sculpted at least like 70% of this, this art doll, so... He, he's not one of the, he's the easily accessible ones. He's more of the Karen went hard <laughs> video. So let's just let's just get into it. Alrighty, as mentioned, I will be mostly 3D sculpting the entirety of this dragon. But that being said, the steps are still very similar to if I would have just been doing this with normal clay. I'm just using it with digital clay. So I'm taking a ball of digital clay and then I'm pushing it into the rough head shape that I'm going for. Now I uh, drew a very rough concept idea of what I wanted this water dragon to end up looking like, which I'll post here. So I was kind of using that as a guide, a reference, if you will, because say it with me folks say it with me folks references people references <laughs> i had to sneak it in i just snuck it in right out of the gate but yes i am using my piece uh, that i drew and just looking up dragons in general on uh from other artists on pinterest just to get a gauge of like what kind of vibe i wanted to go for and so i will always always recommend references and i'm not just talking about anatomical references or muscle anatomy no 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 no. i'm also talking about inspiration i'm talking about things that like if you look at it and you're just like wow i absolutely love that and i would love to implement it into one of my art pieces when i make one or i really love how they use the colors in this piece or oh that just looks really cool and i would love to make that so like that counts as references just 
inspiration. So I, it's always going to bump up your art to a level you never thought possible, even if you're very skilled. It'll just bump you up even that much more. There's literally just never any downsides to it. So, you know, I'm always just gonna let you know. References, people, references. <laughs> so while it's not showing quite as detailed as I normally do when I traditionally sculpt. I hope you do get a general idea of how I sculpted Mr. Dragon's head. I had to sculpt it at least, I think I gave it a good three to four solid tries before I ended up working with this head that I end up using. I just, I, you know, I think it was just one of those not good art days. See, it's it was such not a good art day that my words don't even make sense recalling it. <laughs> but I just, I wasn't, nothing was working. Everything looked wrong to me. And sometimes days just happen where you don't really do the art well, okay? The art just doesn't happen. And trying to force it ends you with horrible results. So if you're having a bad art day, it's okay. We all have them. I have them. Just take a step back and be like, I need a break. Take a little bit of breather, come back to it and give it another try. Eventually, you will succeed and you will dominate that art piece and it'll turn out wonderful. Okay, we need to talk about this for a moment because it's one thing if I don't place the camera in the right spot or I get too focused in on something and so I don't have things in frame. But look at this time lapse that the program created. I'm sorry, could you see what I'm doing right now? Because I sure can. Can't see a dang thing. I, this was me sculpting the coral... Uh, horns for this water dragon but I can't see anything it's just it, ah. it's not my fault guys I even tried to let the program do it and the program was like I'm just gonna channel you and not have it be in frame <laughs> just heckin rude and here is my wonderful printer that decided to break three times while making this video printing some pieces for the water dragon and while it's printing let's go make some stuff for the art dolls because i'm pretty sure it's their dinner time which is the perfect segue into this video sponsor which is hello fresh america's number one meal kit hello fresh offers so many recipes to choose from which is perfect for anyone looking to explore recipes for the summer and good for me since I tend to get into a recipe rut, I won't lie. I also tend to be a picky eater, but I was actually really pleasantly surprised by how good the food was and the variety of it all. It's been really great to have time-wise, especially since making creatures can be, you know, really time consuming and they're not very patient when it comes to food. But thankfully, it only takes about 30 minutes and even less sometimes to make the meals. So no hangry art dolls for me to deal with. <laughs> I also love how everything is pre-portioned so I don't have to worry about measuring or wasting any food. Not like the art dolls would let me do that either. <laughs> so if you'd like to try it out for yourself, go to HelloFresh.com and use code KPCreations14 to get 14 free meals plus free shipping. And once again, thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. And here is what the prints look like fresh out of the printer. You can see all the little supports that the printer uses to make sure that the entire piece is stabilized while it's printing it. So nothing turns out wonky or floats off into the pool of resin abyss. <laughs> so we need to remove all those and I just use some pliers and I have to make sure you always wear gloves because safety first, especially with resin. Uh, just you don't want that stuff in your skin. You don't want to get a reaction from that stuff And once the supports are removed, this is what we're currently working with I am very very if I may be so honest pleasantly surprised with how the head turned out. I I honestly look at it and I'm just like did I sculpt that? Did I really sculpt that because I just remember how much struggle I was having and how I was very discouraged and just didn't think it was going to work and I was going to have to think of something different because nothing I was doing was working and nothing was coming out correctly and then out of all that this popped out and I just absolutely love him so much and I'm just I'm so shocked so <laughs> that just goes to show you if you keep at it you 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 will surprise yourself but this is also his feet 
I made them webbed to kind of play on with the, since he's a water dragon, I imagine him having little webbed toes like a crocodile or any other kind of reptile. So I gave him that. But you'll see here, you see all those little dots and stuff that's actually what the supports leave behind when you remove them so we're going to want to get rid of that and to do that we're going to have to do a little bit of sanding and a little bit of tip for you guys i hate sanding i'm not gonna lie because it gets dust just everywhere and i don't want to inhale that so what i do is i actually wet the piece that I'm going to be sanding and it just makes it so that none of the dust flies off everywhere and it just makes sure to rinse it thoroughly so any residue gets off of the final sanded piece but it just it's uh, it's the bee's knees okay <laughs> it's just really great so if you guys have to sand anything I highly recommend if you can wet the piece just wet it because it makes it a lot easier to deal with all the mess thank you for coming to my TED talk <laughs> Once all the pieces are sanded, it's time to work on the armature. And a lot of you guys are asking me, how do I attach my armatures to the head and feet? So how do I do that? I've mentioned it in a few videos, but now I'm, I'm finally just starting to show the process. I don't know why I wasn't filming it before. I'm a dingus. Sorry. <laughs> but basically, I'm just making sure there is a cavity in the head and feet. So if I'm traditionally sculpting it, I'll make sure that there is a sculpted hole or I'll make a hole in the tinfoil head base. If I'm digitally sculpting it, like in ZBrush, I'll just make sure to sculpt and make sure that there is a cavity in there before I print it in the 3D printer. And then whatever armature I'm using, be it wire or ball and socket, I will insert the armature into the head or feet and then just secure it with epoxy or glue. A lot of you guys also ask how I make my armatures and normally I don't show it and I'm not trying to have it be a secret or anything but I normally just can't get any good angles for what I do. I just find a picture of whatever the closest creature I'm making is. So if it's something like a horse, I'll look up a horse skeleton or, you know, a dog skeleton. If I'm looking up a dragon, even sometimes they have skeletons, but I also have to wing it like I am here, which I'll explain more in a second. But I'll just find a skeletal picture and then I'll actually just trace the skeleton in the wire or ball and sockets and that is how I make my armatures. Now the reason I don't get a good shot of that is because I'm <laughs> I use my TV or computer screen and I just smack the armature <laughs> against the screen and I trace it that way. You can print it out as well especially if you think you're going to be reusing that size but that's what I do which is why I don't film it. <laughs> But in this case, I'm not doing that. I need to make a specific special armature for the water dragon. I know he is going to be large. I know he is going to be long and thin. So I'm just kind of free, free balling it. I'm just going, I'm, I'm going for it. It's the go for it method here. <laughs> so I'm just using the ball and sockets and kind of gauging I, it, a lot of it has to be like made up in my head. It's like I have to visualize what the final result is going to be. Like how long is his neck going to be? How long are his legs going to be? His body, his tail and things like that. And the good thing about ball and sockets is that if I make something too long or too short, I can either remove segments or add segments back. If I had done this with wire, that would be a lot more difficult. So I'm very, very glad I decided to do this with uh, ball and socket armatures because if I would have done it with armatures 
that's wire. I probably would have had to done this quite a few times. Because, uh, yeah, I, I altered his body a lot. <laughs> Once the armature is finished, it is now time to build up the body. And for this, I use quilt batting. Now, quilt batting is pretty readily available at most craft stores, like even Walmart sells it, and you can get it from many places online, especially these days with the pandemic. So it comes in these really long rolls because it's made for quilts, and I'll just cut it into strips and then wrap it around the body over and over until it's built up to how I want. Now, something I always mention and something you want to keep in mind is that you don't want to build up the body quite as much as you want the final end result to be because whatever fabric you're going to add is going to add additional thickness on top of your quilt batting so that's something you want to keep in mind so you want to do it just a little bit less than what you want the end result to be because if you're trying to go for a lanky boy and you build up the body as much as you want you're going to end up getting a chunk boy <laughs> but like i always say here if you want to go and you get chunk 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 boy you go and you get chunk 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 boy if you want to go and you get thin 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 boy you go on ahead and you go get thin 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 boy okay we support all body shapes and sizes here so you go forever whatever body shape you want okay and you rock it for mr water dragon here i wanted to go a lot more lanky and lean at least that was the original plan i don't know if his end result still speaks that <laughs> But that was the uh, initial goal was to go thin lanky boy because I, I imagined him more like a serpent just kind of gliding through the water, which is a very cool picture in my head, but that's what we were going for here. <laughs> Once the quilt batting is all added, it is now time to sew on the body. Now, I'm doing it a little bit different than what I normally do because I did not want any fur to be involved with him. I wanted to go very dragon-like in his appearance. And I'm doing something that probably makes no sense to what I just said because I'm just taking some cotton. Um, like a, It's like a normal cotton fabric and I'm going to be sewing him up in that. And you're just like, what? That's not dragony. <laughs> it's just a sock. <laughs> but that's because I'm using this as pretty much just something that I can sew onto again. Because clearly I hated myself this video. Because if you know anything about me, I hate sewing. I am not good at sewing. So why I decided to make this dragon 90% sewing baffles me. <laughs> I don't know why I decided to do that. I hate sewing, guys. I hate it so much. It. God bless those people who who love sewing and and it can just sit there for hours doing it. But my my word, I just like I feel my brain start to melt in <laughs> sewing and just like it's okay for like the first hour and then I'm just like this is so boring. So, yeah. We're starting with a cotton fabric to sew, spoiler alert, hundreds of scales on to give him the dragony look. I hate myself, clearly. Hey! I'm popping in for your daily reminder, even though it's not really daily because I don't post every single day. But daily reminder nonetheless, that if you've been thinking about doing something, if you've had an art project in your mind or just anything that you've wanted to do in general on your mind and you're looking at it like, mm, I can't do that. I'm not skilled enough for that. I don't even know where to begin. No, I could never. Hey, you stop that. You stop that right now. You look, look, look at me. Look at me. Okay. Right here. Like, I, look at me, okay? You can do it, all right? You can go out there and you can do the thing, okay? 
I, I believe in you. You believe in me. So I believe in you. You can do the thing. Just one step at a time. Just take it one little itty bitty step at a time. In terms of an art doll, start with a materials list. Start with what you need. Or you can even go in before that. Start with what you want to make. Then start with materials lists. See, one step at a time. Got dishes to do? I say it every video. I know some of y'all got dishes. I know some of y'all got dishes out there. Go do them dishes. Okay, one dish. Just put one dish in the dishwasher, one dish away. Look at that. It's perfect. Okay. So I believe in you. You got this. I hope you have a fantastic day. Okay. Okay. Now, I remembered this time so I don't have to deal with jump cut. <laughs> Um, I would like to share two wonderful pieces of art. Look at these. They're so cute and so well made. Just, mwah, mwah. If you would like to send me any art, any art doll you've made, any fan art, or just anything at all that you would like to share with me, please use the hashtag KP Tutorials and so that I can see it and I will share it on my YouTube channel. Okay. Okay, now let's get back to the video. Now I realize I just vented all over the place instead of explaining how I sewed the cotton fabric over the dragon body. So please, if you would actually like to know how I just did what I did, please look at the, like even the last video. It, I'll explain it a lot better there. <laughs> because now I'm just venting that my dumb butt decided to sew. Just, just why, Karen? Why? <laughs> okay, that is all. And once the cotton layer is sewn on and he looks like he's wearing a weird onesie, it is now time to do a little bit of airbrushing. Now I am going to be airbrushing specifically for one purpose and that is to make sure that if any of the scales don't like mesh correctly or they have any bit of gaps or something, I want to make sure that it blends in as much as possible. So if I would have just left the cotton layer white, it would really be a stark contrast with how I want the scales to be colored. So as long as I'm coloring the cotton layer, it'll blend in much better. And if there's any gaps, hopefully it's a lot less noticeable. Now, when I wanted to do the coloring, I wanted to make sure that I copied a, what is going on in a lot of marine life. So especially in predator looking marine life, they have a really dark top coloring and really light underbelly. And that coincides with what direction you're looking at them in the ocean. So if you're looking at them from a top down, you know, the if you look down into the ocean, it gets darker the further you go in. So them having a dark top helps them blend in better. Whereas if you look like say you're lower in the ocean, you look up, it's going to be a lot brighter. So the underbelly of predatory ones and just I think just marine life in general, but I, I, I see it mostly in the predator ones that their underbelly is a lot lighter so that they'll blend in better. I hope that made sense. <laughs> I'm going to sew pictures. So hopefully that makes sense because I, I don't know if that did, but I, my brain is like, I have one brain cell left after this thing. So it's kind of scrambled. <laughs> also, before I forget it, for anyone who's wanting to know, I use a dual action gravity feed airbrush, which just fancy talk for, I put airbrush in, I put airbrush in, I put airbrush paint in at the top. Oh my god, I'm a mess. 
Once all the airbrushing is done, it is now time to paint all the printed pieces. Now you'll see here, I did airbrush a little bit of base blue just so it, it made it easier for me to blend all the blues I wanted to use because I'm going to be following the same general rule that I did for the cotton body where I'm going to be painting a darker top on the head and a lighter color towards the jaw and underneath the jaw. Now, I grade, gradated, is gradated a word? Gradated is a word, right? Because gradiated, <laughs> see, I can't even say it the wrong way. <laughs> Basically, I wanted a gradient of blues from dark to light, and the way I'm doing that <laughs> is by wet blending. <laughs> And if you're like, what? <laughs> Trust me, I'm like, what too? <laughs> but basically what I'm doing is I'm just going as fast as I possibly can and taking a bunch of different blues and wet blending them together, which just means that I'm brushing it on and then immediately getting a lighter or darker color and brushing that in the same spot and so that they blend at the edges. And so it is a more seamless blend than if I tried to just paint, let it dry, the paint a darker color, then let it dry, paint another darker color and let that dry. It's just, it's easier to get a gradient, but it's a lot harder to do because it, it you have to go so quickly takes a little bit of practice there's a lot of back and forth but the end result is it's wonderful for most of the scales it was actually a different story I painted a base color and then I went and dry brushed a really light color to pick up some of the details unfortunately my camera isn't really picking up the variation in colors that well because they're like very subtle differences but basically all that means is you take your base color and you lighten it and then you take your brush and dab some paint on it and then you wipe away most of it and then just dry brush over the raised parts of your sculpt just to make sure that it picks out all the details and it's a really really good technique and I highly recommend it. Let it be known that Water Dragon is also a part of the hashtag no pupil gang. One day, one of my creatures will get a pupil, but today is not that day. Now here is me showing the general idea I had for this whole dragon. I made a bunch of scales, I 3D printed them, and you'll notice all the little holes I put at the very top of them. That is because I'm going to be manually sewing each one in place onto the body. Now, I did think about just gluing them on, but I knew because I was going to be sewing, well now I know, sewing so many on, that I didn't want to risk its posability by it just turning into a giant hunk of glue. <laughs> so instead I opted for the more torturous way of sewing them on. So here you see I'm just using a pin to kind of gauge where I want them to go, how many I'm going to be sewing on in one spot, and if I need to print any more in just the general layout. And then I go in with my needle and thread and I just slowly and very badly 
sew them into place. I don't, <laughs> I don't really know what I was doing. I was just sewing them any way I could get them on securely onto the cotton fabric. Uh, there was a lot of back and forth, some very strange stitches, but we got there in the end. We, we survived and they're secure. They don't move it, it, and it's still plausible. So, you know, at the end of the day, that's all that matters. <laughs> but please don't ask me, what stitch are you using? I have no idea. I think I made one up. <laughs> made a whole new stitch up just, just for this part. <laughs> Now, I realized pretty early on that just the cotton fabric, I wasn't really going to like how that looked if a lot of it ended up showing because I knew like not every inch of the dragon was going to be covered in scales. I knew some of it would show and I just knew right away I wasn't gonna like it. And I've had this kind of fabric. It's a just some kind of reptile faux scale fabric that I've had for a while and I finally get to use it. I've had it for so long and I, I think the last time I used it was on my Quetzalcoatl, which I'll put a picture here, it's, a, it's an older video and I just was like, oh my gosh, I can finally use it. The only problem with this stuff is that it's so thick that it actually inhibits posability a little bit. So I'm kind of being strategic in how I want to place it and how much of it I'm sewing on. So in the end, there was still a little bit of the cotton showing here and there, but I figured that was okay just to make sure that there was still posability and that the general look I was going for was still translating pretty well because I, I wanted him to look really, really dragony. That's like one of the things I wanted for him. I, I just, like, I don't know if crocodile is the right feel I was going for, but I just wanted him to be very scaly. In my mind, he was scaly boy, couldn't be anything else. So, of course, I just made it more difficult by introducing more and more sewing. Guys, so much sewing. Like a week's worth of sewing. I just, oh, if you happen to like it, please like and comment and subscribe. I don't ask, but he took a lot of work <laughs> and I would just very much appreciate it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> And the final steps for this water dragon is going to be adding a giant coral reef on its back. Now I had the idea that this was just going to be a, like if it was in the real world, it would be a really giant, giant creature that actually had a giant coral reef on its back that had um, manta rays and turtles and just fish swimming around it. And that's like a really cool image in my head. So I absolutely had to give it a shot to put it on the back of this creature. And I think the end result turned out really good. But as you see me doing right here, I cut out the cotton fabric and I kind of cut into the quilt batting a bit. And then I'm gluing aluminum foil over that just because I want that to be a base for all the 3D printed coral pieces I printed to anchor into as well as I'm going to be adding epoxy over that to blend it all in and to add a little bit more details just to sell that it looks like a coral reef. This was very very time consuming but the end result looks 
really, really good. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I really liked how this turned out, especially for like never making anything ocean related, which I'm actually pretty surprised about that. Now that I think about it, I haven't really done anything ocean themed. So this is the first one. And once again, I just, I just went for it. I went so hard. <laughs> So in these clips, I've already glued in and anchored in the large coral pieces that I want. And I'm now I'm just adding in all the little, little bits that I printed. Now I want to make sure when I add the epoxy sculpt, if you can see here how I'm making sure that the edges blend in with the coral and just making sure it overlaps a little bit because I don't want this stuff to be falling out. <laughs> so I just make sure, um, I, I don't think anybody's ever going to actually repeat this, but if you do, <laughs> Make sure to bring the epoxy sculpt all the way up to the edges of the coral bit so that they don't fall off. <laughs> Pro tip. <laughs> Once I've placed everything, I'm just going over the epoxy with a quick texture just to make sure that it blends and it looks a little bit like a coral bed. It was a little bit difficult because I had already put in all the bits and bobs and so it was hard to get all the angles, but we eventually got there. Like I mentioned, I picture manta rays, turtles, and fish like swimming around the coral reef. So I'm actually inserting wires for the rays and turtles to actually sit on and be like they're swimming around and kind of floating around the coral reef. And I really like how that looked. I just blended the wire with paint just so that it kind of blended in with the coral reef a little bit better. And speaking of paint, I am now painting the coral reef. I did think about, cause looking at photos it's hard to see what the coral like bottom looks like a lot of it kind of looks sandy in texture but i i didn't really like how that looked so i ended up doing like pinks blues and purples for the coral bed just so that it it was more seamless with the body of the dragon but then with the coral i just went all out with vibrant colors just coral just it just looks so pretty i just coral is cool to look at and I enjoyed looking at a bunch of references for this because, you know, references, people references. <laughs> but yeah, coral is just really pretty and it was fun to paint. And I'm sorry that I don't have as much footage as I would like painting all the coral. Um, this is when the delirium really started to set in. So I thought I was recording at one point, but I wasn't. So uh, you get a little bit of painting, but not as much as I would like. And I'm sorry about that. But... Once all the painting is done, that is the last step, and this dragon is finally finished. It is complete.
and after all that, it is finally completed. Thank you so much if you've made it to the end of this video. I know it was quite a lengthy one. I really appreciate it. And I'd just like to give a quick shout out to my Patreons. Your support means so much to me, and I literally just can never say thank you enough. So, thank you. And now, it is time for a well-deserved nap. So, you know, <laughs> good night. Sleep tight. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!